Mass Effect Andromeda launched with loads of issues. Marketing that led to old time fans into believing that Ryder would be an important figure wearing N7 armour, bad facial animations, a overall weaker story and cast of characters than we got in the original trilogy, and loads of bugs and glitches. Mass Effect Andromeda did so badly at launch that it almost killed the series and thus going forward has put Bioware in a serious predicament that and Anthem as well. But despite all this, we could be seeing Mass Effect Andromeda again return in the Mass Effect series. And in today's video, I'll be going over everything we know about Mass Effect Andromeda and how it will connect with the next game in the series. Lockhart QT. So, firstly, we have some evidence scattered within the teaser trailer reveal all the way back from the Game Awards in 2020. For Mass Effect Andromeda, in the background audio in the reveal trailer, we can hear Godspeed Pathfinder. This audio has been taken directly from Mass Effect Andromeda when we take off in the Tempest for the first time. In the trailer we also hear, as well as Godspeed Pathfinder, we hear Arc 6 is away. Now if you don't know or have never played Mass Effect Andromeda, the Arcs were essentially ships used to flee from the incoming Reaper invasions from Mass Effect 2 and 3. Uh, they were essentially used by the different races to flee to the Andromeda galaxy by placing species from each of the most important species in the Milky Way galaxy in cryosleep and then launching them sort of 600 years into the future to get to Andromeda. Now the significance of this is that in Andromeda we only really hear or explore five different arcs. The Human Arc, the Turian Arc, the Asari Arc, the Salarian Arc and the Quarian Arc. The Quarian Arc which became a meme for being a book rather than a DLC in game. However, this could be just referring to the Corian arc as Arc 6, we currently don't know in the context of the background audio in the teaser trailer. In the teaser trailer we also have a shot of both the Milky Way galaxy as well as the Andromeda galaxy. Now this is interesting because Michael Gamble, the project lead and director on the next game, has stated that both the audio uh, for Arc 6 and Godspeed Pathfinder as well as the opening shot of both galaxies was intentional and included in the trailer for a reason. So the question is now why were both of these included and how can Mass Effect Andromeda play into the next game's story and universe? Well, there's some possible meanings for this. The first one is that the next game will be a direct sequel to Mass Effect Andromeda, not necessarily Mass Effect Andromeda 2, but will be a sequel nonetheless, and will somehow feature travel between both the Andromeda Galaxy and the Milky Way Galaxy. Meaning that the next game would be set 600 plus years in the future, as this is how long it took the Alliance arcs to get to the Helios Cluster in Andromeda with the initiative. The obvious spanner in the works here it, with this theory is Liara to Sony. We know Liara is returning, so how on earth can Liara appear in the Andromeda Galaxy? Well, Asari as a species actually live a lot longer than humans, and in the reveal trailer we can see that Liara does look considerably older and in my previous video I do go over this more in more detail essentially so either click on the screen now or there's a link in the description to go and watch that for more info and more of a in-depth breakdown on this topic. Liara did have ties with the Andromeda initiative so she could be aware of their existence going into the future and somehow meets up with them and somehow travels to Andromeda perhaps going into cryosleep herself. But the question is, why is she on this icy planet, and why is she holding a piece of N7 armour? This isn't necessarily directly toward Commander Shepard, it's not Shepard's armour. It could, it could well be that it's not Shepard's armour for example, but at the same time, she could just be seeing the armour under the snow and then reminiscing, it doesn't have to necessarily be Shepard's. The question is though, why would Ryder have to leave their pathfinding duties to help Liara if she's on a quest of some kind. And the question is, if we are in the Andromeda galaxy, will we be playing as Ryder in the next game if this is in Andromeda and in the future? Personally, I don't think this will be the case as Ryder wasn't liked by the majority of the fan base. plus due to Andromeda's reception at launch, it did leave a bad taste in many players' mouths, so we could not be seeing Andromeda and Ryder altogether. 
The second theory I have is that the next game could take place in between Mass Effect 3 and Andromeda, so rather than 600 years plus in the future, it could take place after Mass Effect 3 and then fill in the gaps of what happens uh, between the old trilogy and Andromeda. Michael Gamble has also confirmed that when researching the series for development, a load of the developers and himself have replayed the original trilogy and have finished Andromeda. So Mass Effect Andromeda is definitely still going to be featured in the next game in Subway and it's on the developer's radar as well as the writing team. In the trailer we also see the Andromeda Galaxy and Milky Way Galaxy as stated earlier next to each other, but this could be symbolism. For example, notice how the shot pans away from into the Milky Way Galaxy. Perhaps this is referring to the fact that Bioware and us as the players are leaving Andromeda behind and returning to the Milky Way Galaxy as Andromeda was the last game in the series and we have had some other information which I've gone over in other videos concerning the fact that we could just be returning to the Milky Way Galaxy instead. Another couple of things to bring up is that the N7 Day 2022 secret transmission that we had, we see a mass relay in space with some comments made by Liara and an unknown character with audio over the top of it. On the mass relay itself, we see a general colour scheme being sort of the uh, cream, white, grey and yellow, like yellowy orange rather. And this closely matches up with Cerberus from the OG trilogy. Now, in fact, a fan actually pointed this out and Michael Gamble actually liked the tweet. He didn't directly comment like he has done on other ones that I bought up, but he did like it. Now, if you play Mass Effect Andromeda, we do know that Cerberus do make their way to the Andromeda galaxy and have agents within the arcs. And actually, Ryder does put a stop to some of their plans in uh, a couple of side quests, but we do know that they can show up if the story continues. Plus, if you look at the N7 Day poster from 2021 and some concept art released by Bioware, the human armor kind of looks a lot like Ryder's armor from like an overhead shot. You sort of see like the uh, spherical helmet there with the visor. It looked very much like Ryder's armor. And going back to the N7 Day 2022, um, concept art and posters that we got. We also have signs from Kadara Port from Mass Effect Andromeda on some of the buildings in the concept art. These signs appear both in Kadara Port as well as the bar upon the uh, human arc in Mass Effect Andromeda. So why would they also appear here if this takes place in the Milky Way galaxy? I mean, this could just be Bioware getting lazy and reusing assets, but I feel like that would have more meaning as Bioware are very meticulous with some of the stuff they put in trailers and in-game for lore reasons, because people will pick up this sort of thing, really. Now, lastly, we have to talk about Liara. In my previous video covering her age, I do comment on the fact that Liara does look a lot older in the trailer, with sort of crow's feet and wrinkles. However, I do point out that this could just be an updated model rather than an age gap. Plus, we have this from a Game Informer interview, which I'll play for you now. If you're interested in the future, obviously we know Liara's much older. Uh, I would put her at her now around 800 years. Um, given off the trailer, and also I've confirmed that that she's much older with the Bioware devs as well. So we know it's very much set in the future. And so, like but this now gets very interesting because although her age hasn't been confirmed by Bioware themselves, officially Liara does show up in Mass Effect Andromeda via audio logs, codex entries, and conversations that she's had with Ryder's father, or really cameos of her replying to his messages. So there is at least a connection between current events and the an initiative going into Mass Effect Andromeda, but connecting Andromeda to the next game is going to be very difficult. If Bioware decide to make this game a sequel to Mass Effect Andromeda, that could annoy a lot of people. Personally, I actually really liked Mass Effect Andromeda. I did play it uh, three years after it came out, so there were obviously less bugs and glitches when I played, but I'd like to see a return to the Milky Way galaxy personally, or at least have both galaxies playable. I think by having both galaxies playable in one game, this would make most of the fan base happy, and it would also be a sort of like a neutral ground sort of way, and it would give new players something new to play and it wouldn't alienate them and it also wouldn't alienate people who enjoyed Andromeda as well. 
So anyway guys, tell me in the comments below, do you think Mass Effect Andromeda will be returning in some way? It certainly looks that way, both from the uh, trailer audio as well as Michael Gamble on Twitter. And uh, did you like Mass Effect Andromeda? Do you hate Mass Effect Andromeda? Do you not want to see it return at all? Tell me in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and for more Mass Effect content, don't forget to stay subscribed and like the video. Thank you so much and I'll, get, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.